The worst part in getting pre-approved is waiting on the callback from your lender on how much house can you really buy, which is why I created this DTI calculator for you guys. So you can crunch your own numbers before connecting with the lender, before talking to your realtor. And since I'm constantly sharing these gems with you guys, I would like to believe that you will call me to help you with your new mortgage. But until then, Use my DTI calculator to see if you're on par with your home buying goals. And if you're not, you can then plan on what you need to do to make more money. So then you can buy your dream home because how much home you can buy is directly determined by your debt to income ratios. And listen, I mean, with mortgage rates going from 3% to 7%, in this video, we'll run through what your lender is looking for. And as your nationwide lender, please throw out that 26%, 36%, 43%, whatever DTI textbook stuff that you guys see on the internet. Because today we are going to look at three different salaries, 50,000, 100,000, and 150,000. And so before we just start calculating income, you need to understand what type of income can be used because we have three overall types of income w2 1099 and business income and then within those three types of income you're either salary hourly or we can use everything from rental income to border income to pension to trust income we can even take your 401k and create income but for the sake of this video, we're going to hone in on the W-2 income. So if you are self-employed, please click here to watch an older video. I'll probably make another video soon about self-employed, especially because it's tax time. But my W-2 employees, we gotta check the box on your job history. We have to crush this myth, this whole two-year thing that drives me insane because unfortunately due to a lot of bad advice, even by real estate professionals, what do most people do? They get a new job and they wait and they wait and they wait and because this whole two year work history thing. And just so you know, the, it means overall two year work history, which means you can have different jobs over two year period. You can have had a sabbatical. You can have been laid off at some point. If you had a gap in your work history within the past two years, what we'll do is go back and pull an additional past work experience to fulfill a 24 month work experience. So the next thing we're going to look at are your monthly debts. And so we're talking your car loan, your credit cards, your mortgage payments, your child support or spousal obligation and your student loans. I don't know why, but I'm always like, hey, what type of debt do you have? 99% of people never say student loans. I don't know what it is, you guys. Student loan debt is still debt. Whether your loans are deferred or not, the logic is we need to account for them because you are responsible for them and you will have to pay them at some point. So we must factor those in. And so typically most loan programs will require a 0.5% of your student loan balance to create this hypothetical loan payment. So for example, 100K in student loan debt means we will need to add an additional $500 of student loan debt to your DTI. And so a good rule of thumb on the damage of $500 bill or more specifically a $700 car note because that's the thing right now the damage that it can do on your home purchase for every $700 of monthly debt you give up a hundred thousand dollars in purchase power and so for my geeks out there we can reverse engineer this thing on the google calculator and of course we are going to show this as well when we break this down on our dti calculator so a few things we can omit from your debt if you have less than 10 months of payments on a loan, we can exclude that from your DTI. If your business pays for your debts and you have proof of 12 months of payments from your business, we can exclude that from your DTI. If you're, you know, I have some clients, their parents are paying their student loans or paying their car note. If we can show that your parents have been paying that bill for the last 12 months, we can exclude that from your DTI. According to HUD, and the fact that I close deals in real life, I just don't talk about it on the internet. Your front end ratio cannot exceed 47% on an FHA loan. You typically can go up to a 50% front end on a conventional loan. But what this means is that your proposed mortgage payment cannot be more than 47% of your gross income. And so whether you have debt or not, that is your starting point. So when people 
that's a that 30 second thing. Take your gross income, your gross monthly income times 47%, and that is the highest your mortgage payment can be. And so for your back end, you can go up to a 56.9% on an FHA loan and up to a 50% on a conventional loan. And now listen, every lender is different. And some lenders have a thing called overlays, which is pretty much guidelines on top of guidelines, which is nine times out of 10 why a loan is so stressful or so hard to do because you have all these old school banks, all these old school loan officers who want to bring you through the ringer all because you're doing an FHA loan or you're doing, you know, even a conventional loan. Some banks are asking for document after document. And so don't even get me started on the fact that most people don't even know that for a conventional loan, you only need one month of bank statements. <laughs> That's a whole other conversation. And so let's break these things down in our DTI calculator. And before we do that, if this video has been helpful to you, please share this video with a friend. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know that you guys like to get this type of information. Let me know that I'm on track with what you guys wanna see, you know? Okay, and also, Disclaimer, this is for informational purposes only. You guys know I am a nationwide lender, but by all means, this is not a quote. Please make sure you guys connect with your loan officer to receive an official loan estimate. So we're looking at three people right now, the 50K, the 100K, and 150K. So first let's do an FHA scenario and then we'll do a conventional scenario. Here we are with our DTI spreadsheet. You want to fill in the fields that have colors, okay? So you wanna add your debts, you wanna add your property taxes, the homeowner's insurance, you wanna put how much down payment you want, your rate that you think you're gonna have. Loan type is, is only gonna be FHA, VA, conventional, or USDA. Then you're gonna add your purchase price, and then of course you are going to put your annual income. And so for the sake of this scenario, we are looking at an FHA loan with no debt. We're gonna do the FHA first because FHA typically, it allows the most flexibility. And with home prices up, with rates up, you know, FHA loan is not always for if you have, you know, bad credit. It, a lot of people use it because they just have a lot of debt. Okay, so this first one, we're looking the 50,000, 100,000, 150. We're assuming you have no debt because believe it or not, I do have some clients who have absolutely no debt, no debt. And also this illustrates, this hones in on the front end ratio. Like I said, the guidelines, you cannot exceed a 47% front end ratio on FHA. It doesn't matter if you have debt or not, whatever, you cannot do it. For example, this $50,000 income, and I'm going with property taxes for New Jersey, okay? You can get a house $225,000. Then we have your FHA loan scenarios if you have debt, okay? Let's just assume everybody has a $500 bill of some sort, whether it's a credit card or a car note, something. Look at our $50,000 earner. We're just staying maxed out at the 47% front end because in New Jersey, it is, you're, it's going to be a challenge if we reduce the home purchase price below 200000 So for the sake of the our reality in our market, it, homes under that price point just really don't e even exist. We'll just leave the purchase price as it is. You see, when you add that $500 in debt, now you're exceeding the back end DTI that's allowed on an FHA loan. So that deal is dead. <laughs> You're gonna have to reduce that purchase price a little to meet the back end ratio of this 56.9, okay? Then when we look at the $150,000 income, we added a lot of debt, okay? And this person still has a lot of room. <laughs> Now, I will say there are max FHA loan limits and it goes by your county. And in my county, the max loan amount is $557,000. So even if we play with their debt a little bit to try to then push up their purchase price, we wouldn't be able to do it because we can only do a max loan amount of 557 FHA in my county in Jersey. We're gonna move on to the conventional loan with no debt. We're gonna do a 10% down payment. I think... 10% down payment is so sweet. If, of course, if you wanna do 
knock yourselves out. But I think a 10% is a nice sweet spot because your mortgage insurance with a good credit score, I mean, it comes out to like almost nothing. Let's just go straight to the $100,000 income earner. If you're bringing 10% of a $500,000 house, that's $50,000. Instead of bringing the 20%, which will be $100,000, save that, put your $50,000 elsewhere and pay a minimal mortgage insurance premium every single month. That way you don't have to bring extra capital, you know, to close on your house. Now I will say mortgage rates are, mortgage rates for conventional are slightly higher than FHA loans. They are slightly higher. Why? Because FHA is insured by the government, which because of that extra layer of insurance, lenders can then provide lower rates because they know the government got their back. <laughs> but the trade-off is with FHA are higher mortgage insurance premiums. The trade-off also is an upfront mortgage insurance premium cost. So the cost of the loan is different than the cost of the conventional. So, you know, I don't want to drag this video out too much, but we can talk about that. Let me know. So let's say, you know, the, the rate is a little higher on this conventional. Once again, there is a max loan limit for a conventional loan. The highest you can go on a conventional loan is $766,000, which think about this. You can do a conventional loan with a 3% down payment. You could do a conventional loan with a 5% down payment. So you can buy an $800,000 loan with just 5% down, you know, it may make sense for you, it may not, but it is an option. So you guys, like I said, keep in mind that this is not a quote, this is informational entertainment purposes, but grab yourself my DTI calculator so then you could play around with it. And like I said, you can then see what you are working with, okay? And especially for my people who own rental properties or who have trust income or who have, what else, you know, maybe spousal income, et cetera, that, that can be a bonus on when, when you and I talk. But for right now, keep it simple on yourself on how to just take your base salary, your base annual income and throw it into the spreadsheet, take your monthly debts and see what you come up with. And if it's cool, if it if you're getting a purchase price that works for you, cool. If not, you know you got some work to do. You got to figure out how to make some more money. So that's what I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Share this video with a friend. Hit the like button. Drop me some comments. Let me know what you think. And until next time.